Today we turn back the clock, so let's turn that baby back and look at something 40 years ago that maybe we're taking for granted about UCLA's football history as we welcome in a special guest. Throwback Thursday, turning back the clock. Let's get locked and loaded for this episode of Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, we're dancing. Yeah, we're excited. Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, your host for Locked On UCLA, joined by Zach Candy. Yes, does he look similar? Does it sound similar? Yeah, we're twins with the same name. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. So it's Zach and Zach. We have Zach Handy, who is the twin of Jacob Handy. Zach Handy from Fox Sports, a diehard UCLA fan. Myself, a D1 play-by-play broadcaster and diehard Bruins fan. Myself, once welcome once again to Zach Handy. And for Locked On UCLA, this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. And this first segment as well, as you can go get an easy way to find new candidates for jobs from LinkedIn Jobs. As we bring you this first segment and this whole episode, Throwback Thursday, as we welcome some friends. What, some Bruin mascots in the back there, Zach? Yeah, that was uh, big Bozer, Bozer Bears back there getting hyped for the Locked On UCLA podcast back there. He's as, he's as excited as both of us are. We're excited. So what is 40 years in the making? What happened around 40 years ago for UCLA football? Well, let's think. Was it a great run for Terry Donahue and company? Was it UCLA having a good season? Yeah, those are all things. A great 1982 UCLA season, which we'll kind of detail, maybe not in depth. But what made 1982 special? Well, 1982 was the first season, the year where UCLA moved into the Rose Bowl after all those dreaded years in the Coliseum from the late 1920s into 1982, where UCLA said, no, nah, no, nah, we're not sharing that little bowl, bowl history, if you will, that Coliseum with the Trojans anymore. UCLA wanted their own home field advantage, and they moved into the Rose Bowl after, let's kind of set the stage here. If you remember, the Rams... They moved away from L.A. They went to Anaheim. Speaking of crazy things, moving with the L.A. Angels, maybe they'll be Anaheim. Who knows? A lot of things can kind of go back and forth between the past and now the current present. So the Rams left, vacated the Coliseum. The then Oakland Raiders thought, hey, the now deceased Al Davis, the owner of the Raiders, All right, said, oh, all right, let's come to L.A. Let's move to the Coliseum with the now vacant Coliseum. So the Raiders came. This set in motion a kind of three-year cycle from 79 to 82 where the Raiders were demanding certain things, and UCLA found themselves as the second tenant of the Coliseum, and the third, when the Raiders came in, or what would be the third, kind of getting pushed to the side. UCLA's chancellor, Charles E. Young, was trying to have a a talk with with all these different things coming together. The Coliseum Commission Committee, where they're talking about how to bring in UCLA, how to bring in the Raiders. And after the Raiders officially won the lawsuit against the NFL in July of 1982, it was a meeting where Chancellor Charles Young was not allowed by the Coliseum Committee to sit on the meeting. This is someone who is sitting in on the meeting. Yeah, just like the pup behind Zach. Just like the pup, he wasn't allowed to sit in on the meeting. And then he said, all right, he called his assistant, John Sandbrook, and UCLA then decided, all right, let's call it Pasadena. What's going on in the Rose Bowl? So just think, the Rams leaving, the Raiders coming in, and UCLA all because of the NFL in LA then found themselves, which is what some of the trouble is now, looking for a new home, and looking to find some ways to make some revenue and make their own home a new home. So what do you think about that start of the story? What, what, are we th- what is that? You know, I never put it 
like in the perspective or thought about it in the fact that like the NFL had such a big part in this happening. You know, they're moving in and moving out at the same time. There's all sorts of pieces going around at the Coliseum right there. And here's UCLA, as you said, just thinking, what's the best way that I can create a true home field advantage? I don't have to share with my bitter, awful rival. Like that's, that's just not a relationship I think either, either people want to be in. Um, and how can I create revenue, this home field advantage, and a, a place of my own and start building some history and building tradition? Um, what I think it's a secret blessing, uh, honestly, for them that the NFL kind of came in and what sounds like almost forced their hand to find a home uh, because the Rose Bowl is a beautiful place and it's been home now for 40 years and is chock full of delightful college football memories, especially for the Bruins. Yeah, UCLA having so many memories and immediately – in 1982, the Bruins having a season to remember. So it started with Chancellor Young not being led into a meeting and the Bruins having to look elsewhere saying, hey, what's over there in Pasadena? And there are some net revenue fees where they had to go back to the venue or go back to who they're using. And with USC and the Coliseum, 10% of said revenue had to go back to the Coliseum. For, the, for Pasadena and the Rose Bowl, it was a much lower percentage that was enticing. A new home was enticing. A new start of UCLA football was enticing. And part of the thing that was problematic was that the Raiders came in. And mind you, I have to talk trash on the Raiders. I am a Raider fan myself. I have to <laughs> say that. But the Raiders came in, and they wanted to make all these changes. Luxury boxes, paint, the locker room, silver and black. They wanted to make it the black hole in Los Angeles, right? They wanted to say, all right, no more Oakland. Let's live and live proud in L.A. So they're making all these changes. Chancellor Young wasn't in any of these conversations. He kind of got booted out, all because the Rams initially left in the late 70s, going to Anaheim. And you remember, they played at Angel Stadium before they eventually left to St. Louis with the Raiders going back to Oakland. But this all started things in motion where UCLA said, all right, what are we doing? Why are we here? Why are Zach Candy and Zach Anderson Yoxheimer forgetting to do the Bro and A clap? So get your hands in the air, Bro and fans. And one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, you, C, C, L, A, U, C, L, A, fight, 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 fight. Come on. Oh, look, look at Bowser. Bowser got in on the A clap. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He was barking in the beginning, and I forgot to do that. So I figured, hey, we need. To talk he about. He was trying to remind us. That's all he said. He's like, guys, yeah. are we gonna eight clap, clap or are we not? Eight clap. Eight clap. Yeah, that's all he was when, saying. When when you when you do this on video, it's not like audio where it's like, oh, we forgot to do it. Let's let's do it now. So, all right. Besides that side tracking, we'll continue on more with UCLA's move to the rules. Well, that that was just the beginning of the crux of it, where the Raiders and Rams played a part of UCLA moving into the Rose Bowl, other than just the sheer fact of having to share it with your bitter rival, the USC Trojans, where UCLA shared the stadium from 1928 until the 1982 year. Before we move on, let's hear some words from our sponsors, LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 800 million people. You can use simple tools like screening questions, which make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rank LinkedIn number one in delivery quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs will help you find those candidates you want to talk to faster as nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn every week. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Speaking of those terms and conditions, as UCLA says, all right. What are our terms and conditions? Not too good at the Rose Bowl. Not too good. We don't like it. We, I mean, excuse me, not too good at the Coliseum. Not too good at the Coliseum. The Rose Bowl is an intriguing eye. We already have a big game played there that we want to play in every January 1st or so often on January 2nd. The Bruins say, all right, let's move 
1982. It's kind of funny how now 40 years later, the Bruins are moving to the Big Ten, right? If we remember, Zach. Who is the biggest... I do recall. Who are the biggest figures that are opposing the Big Ten move off the top of your head? Um, elaborate what you mean, like the traditionalists? We have, we have, You're saying we like have, the traditionalists Well, type not the traditionalists, or... but more like the political figures. We have one, Governor Gavin Newsom, who kind of led to that UC Regents meeting, and maybe some people who don't like the meeting and like to stay in the Pac-10, Pac-12 era, you know, the old school days. When you I, I was in... one of said people, if you recall, when we, we talked about this before, I, I wasn't the biggest component of moving over to the Big Ten. He didn't like it. I'll be honest. I didn't like it initially, but there's just so many things coming out as to why it is beneficial for the Bruins, especially in just getting so much money, so much more revenue. They can save and get rid of all that debt. We've talked about that before. So back in 1982, do we think it was the UC Board of Regents who was actually opposed to this? Was it 40 years ago that they didn't like the move to the Rose Bowl? No, it was actually the UC Board of Regents who affirmed the decision to move to the Rose Bowl. Now, 40 years later, it's UCLA having to deal with the Board of Regents who says they're weighing all their options to potentially, if they really get dramatic about it, attempt to block the move to the Big Ten or just make it a lot harder for schools in the future for other UCs or even UCLA and any other big athletic move. So I thought that was funny how the UC board of regents actually was supportive of this move to the Rose bowl. Yeah. We need, we we need those guys back, back doing it again. Now, 40 years later, so they can support the big 10 moves. Something's got lost along the way. (laughs) So funny enough, two big figures opposed to this move were actually a political figure. The then mayor, Tom Bradley, not exactly the governor of California, like Gavin Newsom, but still a very well-known political figure so you get your political figure who doesn't want this move to happen is opposed to it then who is actually opposed to it chip kelly hasn't come out and said anything negative about the move to the big 10 but then ucla coach back in 1982 terry donahue disapproved he disapproved of this move to the big 10 he said no i do not like it this is exactly what was said he was pretty upset and trying to find it. This is what Young remembers. Chancellor Young. Head coach Terry Donahue initially told me, this is to the UCLA chancellor at the time, that he was destroying UCLA football and that he wouldn't be able to attract new players. Again, this is the head coach of the UCLA that football team. feels a little harsh. Destroying UCLA football. Is that kind of, let's put this to perspective nowadays. Maybe some people like us too, or we think moving to the Big Ten is destroying UCLA football? No. You could probably make a better case that it's enhancing it. The competition level, um, the the like conference itself is is as a whole better. The exposure level will be better. Um, I think you could probably make a case that you're enhancing more now than uh, than destroying. Well, then as soon as the 1980s 1982 season was about to roll around. This is what Donahue actually said. He, this is his quote, changing his mind. Well, we begin hmm. our season at the Rose Bowl on September 11th, 1982 against Long Beach State. That's what the Bruins did. And he said, and there's no doubt in my mind that if everything goes well, we'll end it here on January 1st, 1983, meaning they would play a home game in the Rose Bowl for the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game on January 1st on New Year's Day. So he went from, you are destroying UCLA football. We had the political figure against the move going to the Rose Bowl after playing all those years in the Coliseum, sharing it with the Trojans, and then UCLA moving to the Rose Bowl and their own coach saying, no, we don't want to be here. We don't want to be here. Imagine if Chip Kelly sat here and was like, hey, we don't want to move to the Big Ten. Everybody's asking him questions about the Big Ten when in reality his job is on the line. Even with the extension, all the fans I've seen cry in different forums about how Chip Kelly wants to – he needs to have a successful year this year to prove it for next year, the last year in the Pac-12, before even reaching to the Big Ten. I don't necessarily disagree with those fans for feeling that way, you know, just just to you know, kind of reiterate that. I think – 
I don't think his seat is necessarily um, guaranteed when we get to the Big Ten. Um, granted, I understand the league is harder this year and going forward with the arrival of Lincoln Riley and what USC is doing over there, right? They are back. The, the, they have now enhanced themselves again and, and kind of come to the, the front door of college football again. But if Chip Kelly has a couple of down years here, there's no guarantee he's our head coach moving into the Big Ten. And I think that's a fair criticism uh, to have of Chip Kelly. Well, there's criticism of the head coach, criticism of the move, all these moving parts. Just kind of like 40 years in a in between from 1982 to 2022, which is what I thought this segment would work well, which is, especially if you're listening, we'll come back with more after we hear some words from our sponsors. But fans, if you're listening at home, thanks for making Locked On UCLA your first listen every day. The ultimate college football preview is here. A seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts, and Odyssey College Football Insiders. I'm on the segment where the Locked On Pac-12 has it posted for the UCLA segment shared with the Arizona schools as to how UCLA will do in 2022. And speaking to those expectations for the Bruins, there's three important games this year, and that's what we talk about on that college football preview with the Insider. It's everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. Search for the Ultimate College Football Preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. I promise you, it's worth your time for all the conferences and for all of college football. Meanwhile, as we get back to our little look back 40 years ago on this Throwback Thursday segment, the episode brought to you by LinkedIn, it's quite a funny turnaround. Terry Donahue saying, hey, I don't want to go to the Rose Bowl. Actually, just kidding. We're going to be here January 1st, (laughs) and we want to own the Rose Bowl. We want to own this like it's our home. So what happens? Long Beach State comes to town September 11th on 19 in 1982. The Bruins wipe the floor with them 41 to 10 in a victory over Long Beach State over their now non-existent football team. The Bruins in 1982 finished the year unbeaten at home, just one lousy tie against Arizona. And what happens in that special 1982 year? You Beat SC by a point, 20 to 19. The epic Carl Morgan takedown of Tinsley on the two point conversion try by the Trojans when they were down 20 to 19 in that fourth quarter, and the Bruins beat the Trojans. In 1981, in the Coliseum, UCLA had lost by a point. So immediately you could see that home field impact very, very important. Then UCLA, in that same year, beat Michigan twice, including avenging uh, a bowl game loss against the Wolverines a year ago. In January 1st, 1983, the Bruins got their seventh quote-unquote home game of the year in the Rose Bowl, and they beat the Michigan Wolverines. They beat Michigan twice in a year in a schedule that actually included at Colorado, at Michigan, and at Wisconsin. And the Bruins go 10-1-1 and and win the Rose Bowl for one of two back-to-back seasons where the Bruins won the Rose Bowl and actually played at home twice during those Rose Bowl games. 40 years ago, and that's what started. Even though legendary head coach Terry Donahue didn't want to be there, the mayor disapproved, and UCLA immediately started winning two Rose Bowls in a row, and they won three straight starting with that 1982 victory over USC. Who would have thought? I mean, what a story. What what a way to say, yes, we do have a home field advantage, by the way. It does make a difference. I mean, way to just immediately make the imprint. I think the most impressive thing about that season is that three-game stretch of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Colorado. All, all in a row. The, all in a row. All on the road. Traveling all over the place uh, and grabbing three wins there. you got to think if you try to just place yourself back in time 40 years – um, as a member of that team, I mean, confidence after a three-game stretch like that, I, how could you be beat? Who could beat a team like that uh, after you go through three of those? And they, they only lost they take that year is a heck of a Washington team on the road, uh, number 10 in the country, I believe, that year. Just an absolute juggernaut of a Washington team. And that's if that's going to be your only loss on a Rose Bowl campaign, I, I think everyone can live with that. And this is what Terry Donahue had to say after that move. 
The move from the Coliseum to the Rose Bowl in 1982 was the single most important decision in the history of UCLA football. Ah, cool. It was the, coming around, huh, buddy? It was, the four, it was the first time UCLA had a true home field advantage, oh, which is funny that we bring this up, which one is funny considering he changed his tune in reverse course. Two, what's more important is 40 years later, what he said was the most single most important decision in the history of UCLA football has now been replaced by the move to the Big Ten, which can, one, make those games in the Rose Bowl more relevant, maybe get more fans like us back in the stadium. Not that we're lackadaisical and going, but the Rose Bowl, even in recent years in the early 2000s, late 2010s, it was filling up close to 80,000, 88,000 for big games. Now it's not even getting there, close yeah. to 60,000. Well, we can be honest. Last year there was some – embarrassing crowds for ucla home games they were just not filling it in if there's one thing the big 10 move does 40 years later i think it does re-energize you know if you have michigan wisconsin ohio state come to town that game's going to fill up i'm just telling you right now like there's no way around it those games are going to fill up with fans and what's funny is you go 40 years in the future terry donahue saying the single most important move in ucla history well now it's been made martin germond UCLA. And it's funny how the regents who said, go to the Rose Bowl, do it, leave Los Angeles, go to Pasadena. Then what was being screamed and moaned about was the tri the travel being twice as far from Westwood to downtown LA, from Westwood to Pasadena. And now it's the travel from much further, UCLA to Rutgers, to Maryland, <laughs> All this Iceland. stuff. Which one was it? No. Oh, yeah. Rutgers to Iceland. That was even closer <laughs> technically than Rutgers to UCLA. It's just funny <laughs> how they all come together 40 years later in one, UCLA beating a Long Beach State team en route to a Rose. Well, I think that's funny. That's Two, awesome. how the head coach said, this is stupid. Basically, he said, this yeah. is dumb. You're destroying hey, UCLA football. You know UCLA. how older people get. He's the head coach. So even in the 80s, he's the older guy there. Older people don't like change, Zach. We know this, right? And so Terry's looking at this. He's like, I got to take a new route to work. I got to do a new thing all the time. I got to do probably all these press conferences about new stuff going on. Old people don't like change. So I can understand Terry being skeptical. But one thing everyone likes is winning. And once UCLA got in there and didn't lose a game for over a year, yeah, I think Coach probably had a change of tune. Like, I think the new home's going to work out. Yeah, I think the new home. I think the new home's going to work out, guys. I think it's pretty solid. Especially when you beat UCLA in a one. I mean, you beat USC in a one point game. You then at the goal line, like epic. You know what I mean? Just and then the you go unbeaten, line. unbeaten at home, and you win the Rose Bowl at home two straight years. One of like a gigantic four-year stretch from 83 to 86 on those New Year's Day bowl games. You beat Michigan twice in a year, who apparently is now afraid to play UCLA 40 years in the future, although they're going to have to play as conference foes. It's hey, just kind of funny. people don't forget, man. That, that fear lingers on for 40 years, man. People don't it, it, forget it. <laughs> it's just kind of funny how it all comes together. And nobody wanted to move to the Rose Bowl, or some people didn't. Some people don't want to move to the Big Ten. And there's been just so many reasons laid out to why UCLA should move to the Big Ten, should move to the Rose Bowl. And now there's kind of some teasing of maybe UCLA should move to SoFi. Should they move to a different I don't stadium? Like that one. I don't like I, that. I don't like the SoFi idea either. Uh, come on. If traffic's already horrible getting into SoFi, the perfect thing about the Rose Bowl mm. was that they let them use the nearby golf course surrounding as a parking lot, which I think initially I was reading, they said they could use it almost entirely for free, how they could use that golf course for a parking lot, how it affects us now, who knows. But how the golf course affects tailgating, I think UCLA has maybe the best tailgating experience in California, especially yeah. with the grass compared to – I mean, I know you can go to other tailgates, other places, you go to the Midwest, you go to Texas, go to other places in the SEC. Tailgating experience is nice, but the Rose Bowl, just think of the iconic sight lines, the games, just the importance of the game. And how fun it is to tailgate because you're on grass and not on ugly, but ugly concrete. Yeah, the, the comfort of the grass is just great. I mean, you go, you tailgate, you bring the kids, or it's you and a bunch of friends. You can throw the football around. 
get some chairs out, you know, throw some sandals on, throw some sandals off because you're on grass, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, it really is one of the most enjoyable tailgating experiences is a UCLA football game. You won't now, get that if you move to SoFi. You're not. You're not. I don't want to move to SoFi. I'm always the joke about that they pumped in crowd noise for the preseason yeah. game. It doesn't matter. You're going to have the crowd noise with the Big Ten crowds coming. The UCLA, fan, UCLA fans, we need to show up. And I thought it'd be funny. I was looking. I was like, what's throwback Thursday going to bring us today? And I was like, wait a minute. I want to talk to somebody. So, I, you know, we had Zach on. And I thought it was a funny little look at all those parallels the i was gonna say there are far more parallels uh 40 years later than i ever anticipated i did not expect you to draw these lines for me but it is crazy as they say history repeats itself and obviously it's not the exact same thing happening here but, but 40 years later important. yeah it is as you said it could be replacing what was known as the most important move in ucla history 40 years later, you know, almost to the dot is now possibly re replacing said move uh, with this Big Ten news this year. And um, it is it is quite a time and quite a time it was in 1982 uh, for UCLA football and UCLA sports, really. UCLA sports being affected then, being affected now, all for the positive as we wrap up this Throwback Thursday episode for the entirety of the episode. Yeah, I thought it was important to kind of go little bits and pieces. There's more things you can dive in and research LA Times articles, but I figured it was just kind of funny to go back to the past, bring it to the future, merge it together in the present, and just kind of see how fun it was. And remember, hey, they beat SC in that first game and led. They have a winning record, actually, in the Rose Bowl against the Trojans. They're 11-9 and nine in 20 all-time meetings in the Rose Bowl. I believe I counted. Maybe I miscounted, but it is what it is. They have a winning record against the Trojans in the Rose Bowl. One, that's that's key. And then two, that led to a string of Rose Bowls for Terry Donahue in the single most important year for UCLA football, as he said then, or sing, single important move. And now it's being replaced by the Big Ten move. I just thought, let's let's refresh your memory. It's already coming upon us. I've never, I haven't even seen it being mentioned. Forty year anniversary of the move, but we're fun. We're having a great time. And again, Zach Handy. From Fox Sports, thanks for joining the pod. Thank you. Shout out to uh, backup quarterback and UCLA coach Rick Neuheisel as part of that yes. 1982 uh, Rose Bowl team. He was not the starter that year, but uh, I always I always enjoyed seeing Rick. I, I enjoy seeing his son as part of the team still to this day and being a Who's part more of iconic, Rick or Jerry? I, who, I, I mean, don't know. I, Jerry with the flow might be, man. I mean, Jerry's Jerry with the win. I mean, I know Rick. I know Rick has the whole coaching thing, which people have, might have a much different opinion on him compared to sitting on the bench for that Rose Bowl winning team in the 1983 year. But that's a whole nother pod we could talk about. Rick versus Jerry. The, <laughs> the jokes aside, doesn't matter. I, I would lean with Jerry, but it's all kidding aside. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go check out Locked On Pac-12 with host Spencer McLaughlin. Make that your second listen after this. Meanwhile, for Locked On to UCLA, we're going to get our eight clap in on time this time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, you see, LA, LA, UCLA, LA, fight, LA, fight, 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 fight. Bruins, it's oh, been 40 I years. Bozers was coming again. Oof. He was coming again. 40 years since they moved to the Rose Bowl. And now here they are moving to the Big Ten. Thanks for tuning in for Throwback Thursday of Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins. <laughs>